Um, we are at the, in my opinion, we are at the beginning of a very classic late cycle, late big cycle debt crisis when the supply demand gap, when you're producing too, too much debt and you have also a shortage of buyers. What's happening now as we have to sell all this uh, debt is we then have, do you have enough buyers? There the, the debt markets, the capital markets, this treasury issuance that everybody is now talking about, what it will mean. Are we getting any sense or is that going to play out over some time or do we feel like that's already starting to subside as a concern? Well, people are worried about it. It was on the cover of the journal this morning. I know. But we're not going to know much. So the way this works is clearly that the Treasury has to issue a bunch of debt, as much as a trillion dollars to refill its coffers after the debt ceiling was raised. And so that's going to, there's going to have to be a lot of demand. And I think there are two outcomes here, David, just to understand this. Either money market funds reallocate and they take up that issuance, or it comes out of bank reserves. And the bank reserves piece is the one that people worry about, it's zero velocity money. What it means is it sucks liquidity out of the system, and we don't know what the balance is. If it comes out of money market funds, it's less of a problem. We're not going to get that data until June 13th from the New York Fed. They post it on their website. They post the you know, the RRP balances, which is the, the money markets, on that. On that. And, if, and if it comes from that, it's less of a big deal, but it is a headwind facing the banks at the same time where we're seeing QT, where they're letting the balance sheet shrink, at the same time where they're not ruling out another interest rate increase. Even though everyone expects a pause next week, they're leaving July on the table, and now the odds are that they do go in July. In July? All about our, that's as headwinds well, that's, for banks and right, liquidity. Which has changed dramatically, really. In just Welcome, Welcome to the Crypto teacher. teacher. And you know I come back with that video just to make you think. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And guys, we have Ray Dalio giving us the truth. And we know he always talks about the cycles of America, the cycles of an economy. And we know we're headed for a debt crisis. We know Janet Yellen and Jerome Powell as the landers in the fourth industrial revolution. The treasury we know was tapping those retirement funds since January 19th, flooding the market. Now all that money has to be returned. The government needs to issue as much as one trillion in treasury bills over the next six months. And we are now in a higher interest rate environment. And the Fed has about $2.1 trillion sitting in the repo facility, but then we know the Treasury would have to pay up. And since we've been in this higher interest rate environment, the Fed hasn't even been getting paid. But remember, guys, it's a well-orchestrated plan. We know the NWO caused the problem, wait for the reaction, and run in with the solution. Remember, the C word allowed them to print all this money. And then by them printing all this money, allowed the people to sit at home, which was another test for later. By people sitting at home, and allowed them to bring in all the technology. Robots, algorithms, and drones, and we see the artificial intelligence that has been embedded in all the corporations for over a decade. And by printing all this money, it created all this inflation. And now the Fed is raising rates on the inflation that they caused which is going to destroy small banks, which is going to destroy small businesses, which is going to put a lot of people out of work. And that will allow the machines to take over and the people to get free money airdrop to them, telling them what, where, and when and how to buy and they have three to six months to spend it or poof, it's gone. But first, guys, we know they're going to bring in all the distraction. The debt ceiling allowed them to buy time. Now they're back to crypto in order to blame the banking crisis. And then, of course, guys, later this year, we're going to hear the drums are beating. We know the emerging markets is going to flip the switch on the digital transformation. And then the United States is going to follow. We know Fed now is next month. So all the testing that we see going on, and you know I do every single video letting you know all the testing the Fed and the other central banks are doing when it comes to blockchain distributed ledger, tokenization. But guys, you have to understand, when you look at SWIFT, Chainlink, blockchain is going to give the NWO the all CNI. They're going to know you better than you know yourself. 
and that's going to set up the millennials and Generation Z for the metaverse. And remember the crypto teacher told you, because it knows when it comes to the new world order, it's all planned out. You have a wonderful day. Ask you about uh, the, the banking business, but as it relates to commercial real estate, there's a lot of worry, as you know so very well, about the state of commercial real estate, especially around uh, office and what that means to a lot of the regional banks, um, maybe not now, but come the end of uh, this year, early next year, and, and the implications uh, for that. Some people believe that there could be more bank failures. How concerned are you about that? Well, I, I do think that there will be issues with respect to commercial real estate. Um, certainly the demand for office space uh, since uh, we've seen such a big change in um, attitudes and behavior toward um, remote work, uh, th that has changed. And especially in an environment of higher interest rates, um, I think banks are broadly preparing for uh, some restructuring and difficulties uh, going ahead. In the Coinbase uh, uh, complaint, we note that they have, through the Coinbase wallet, you can trade 16,000 different tokens. And there's a lot of debate as to the use cases and whether there's any there, there. Look, we don't need more uh, digital currency. We already have digital currency. It's called the U.S. dollar. It's called the euro. It's called the yen. They're all digital right now. We already have digital investments. And you, you have digital, you have entrepreneurs representing digital investments on this program all day long. And it's, it's whether it's the big tech companies, the automobile companies, uh, you name it. It's all digital right now, the investing world. So what is the real underlying value of these tokens? And that's why you need full, fair, and truthful disclosures. Do you think this is about disclosures? Uh, or do you think this is about the underlying currencies that are on on your exchange? It's tough to know what exactly what he means by that. I mean, um, our self-custodial wallet uh, is not trading crypto, uh, the ones that he, he mentioned some huge number. That's happening in DeFi. That, that's not something that we actually operate the trading out. Our centralized exchange is really trading a much smaller number of assets. We've we reviewed you know, over 1,000 assets in crypto. We rejected 90% of them because we felt they weren't appropriate for our exchange. And about 200 of them are listed on our, our centralized product. And I don't know, to his, to his point about you know, what's the there there, right. um, people are using crypto for all kinds of things. They're not just trading. And they're doing payments with it. You know, Ukraine raised $200 million. And presidential candidates are taking it. And it's a new technology that can be used to update all kinds of financial right. services. And we don't, we don't need the government picking and choosing our technology right. winners. Let's let the market decide. I actually got a meeting that was virtual. It may, it may, you know, it may have been COVID related or something like that. But we were able to get a, a virtual meeting. But unfortunately, it was frankly like a pretty icy reception, I would say. Um, you know, I, we sort of came in hat in hand and said, hey, Chair Gensler, you know, you, you've asked people to come in and register. Respectfully, we're here to register. What would you like us to do? What, what um, process would you like us to go through? And his response was, um, you know, talk to your lawyer. I'm not here to advise you. Well, but, uh, it's, Becky, it's a good question. The question is, last year, where was Gary Gensler? He said he was the cop on the beat and he was out prosecuting and condemning Kim Kardashian for promoting crypto, but he didn't take any action, uh, in my view, last year to prevent the FTX uh, matter from taking place, which was <laughs> one of the biggest the frauds we've ever do, seen. Does he have the authority to do that or not? I mean, I think the, the argument has been that he doesn't have the authority. It's yeah. hard to say, why didn't he do something sooner and at the same time say he doesn't have the authority? Well, he's the one who says he has the authority. He's determined in his view that every digital asset that's out there trading a token or otherwise other than bitcoin he considers a security and so he's taking that approach others don't believe that to be the case he's urged people to come in and register but no one has gotten any satisfactory answers from the commission from that point of view as well what that tells me is there is confusion we have this famous howey test of what's a security and not a security. And what we do in this bill we introduced uh, as a discussion gra draft last Friday is codify that. We actually explain how the Howey test would work for digital assets. What That'll bring a lot of fraud, clarity. Though? I mean, flat out fraud. We'll find is... out flat out fraud. 
He already got Well, he's got the authority and he should exercise it on pursuing flat out fraud as he did in the FTX case. But no one here is excusing fraud or bad behavior. We what we're suggesting is all these examples, all these we, examples indicate that we have to have clear rules of the road. Going to a different economy, and we're going to be learning more about that uh, as we go, but clearly we're, we're, we're learning that things can be done uh, from remote, remote locations. We're learning that technology can replace people even more than we thought. We're not going back to the same economy. We're, going, we're recovering, but to a different economy. And it'll be one that is more leveraged to technology. And I worry that that is going to make it even more difficult than it was for, for many workers. In Silicon Valley and my friends who work in technology know that what we did to the manufacturing workers, we are now going to do to the retail workers, the call center workers, the fast food workers, the truck drivers, and then even bookkeepers, accountants, uh, insurance agents, lawyers, and on and on through the economy. So what happened to the manufacturing workers is a very clear sign. And so we'll import Chinese-based CBDC technology. So it's going to be CBDC in a box. Uh, provided to you by the People's Bank of China. Crypto teacher and the New World Order book, plus the three kids' books, it's time to re-educate. Also, new to cryptos, Coinbase, Bitchu, Binance. Do not forget book links and crypto links are in the description. The stock channel, guys. Don't forget to go like, subscribe, spread everywhere. You have your Kobo, your chip size, your banking, your gaming, while everybody's sitting at home, get on stocks, the receiver of the biotech stocks, and while everybody's at home wishing, they were still getting that free money. What are they doing? Drinking and smoking weed. Don't forget about those stocks and you have a wonderful day. Most powerful person in the world is the storyteller. The storyteller sets the vision, values, and agenda of an entire generation to come. Steve Jobs. And guys, you know I truly believe in this. When you look at the New World Order, they're the storytellers. And that's the reason why I wrote my New World Order book. But guys, now it's time to change the current generation. And I wrote three kids' books. You know, I love the Trinity because I understand the power that's in it. So I have three books. We have an opportunity to change the generation, to educate, not just me, but I want to show you that I take action on a daily basis. And I want you to take action on a daily basis. Whether it's your job, whether it's in your community, we have an opportunity right now to educate the masses. I posted this on my Twitter account. Please share, but this is a short clip of the three books. There's going to be a clothing line and action figure. Please get these books for your kids, nephews, cousins, friends, so therefore we can start the re-education now. Because as we see, the fourth industrial revolution foundation is definitely here. Robots, algorithms, drones, taking humanity out the picture we have to re-educate, but let's get into the video. Part one, King Joshua and Grandma Tim save the village. Part two, King Joshua and Grandma Tim save New York. Long COVID-33. Part three, King Joshua and Grandma Tim goes to China. It's mandatory to get part one, part two, and part three of this series. It's time to re-educate Generation Z.